Hello and welcome to the Sambal Crochet Podcast. My name is Claudia and I'm coming to you from Germany. so early <laughs> that's because I have a lovely finished object and I want to show you so today I have for you a finished object and a work in progress and some incoming I think I will turn this around this time I will start with incoming then I will go to works in progress and then at the end I will show you my finished object First of all, I've been to a place called Lenep and I've posted a little, little video on YouTube for you. And I've spent a bit of money in the shops there. So this is what I bought at a shop called Goldstück. It's a cushion. It's a cushion and it's not cloth, it's actually embroidery. I would expect it to be machine embroidery, but still, I think it's a great pattern. And it caught my eye. Uh, she had decorated it in her window, her display window. So I saw it standing outside on the street and there it was. This is uh, from a company called Colmore here and she told me that she gets all her things in Holland in the Netherlands so this is my first incoming object and by the way if you see me glancing over there then that's because it's my lunch break and I'm still checking my emails now and then. <laughs> I've also been in a shop called Wintermeyer, or the owner is probably called Wintermeyer. That's a name, I would say. And um, also in Lennep. And I bought first some Earl Grey tea. The whole shop smelled lovely. And, you know, if you've been in a tea shop, that's always special, isn't it? You feel at home already and you just want to sit down, eat a piece of cake and drink some tea and just read a book or something. So this is my favorite kind of tea. And we're not talking about this brand specifically. It's just Earl Grey is my favorite tea. And then there were other people who bought some, for me, unusual tea. It's a herbal tea. And it's vanilla lemongrass tea. And she filled this little parcel up for me as, as a testing version. So this was, this, this was free. She gave it to me as a present and um, it has in there pieces of apple and lemongrass, green rooibos. I didn't know that you get rooibos in green. And uh, orange pieces and ver verbena is that in the right word in English verbenenkraut in German and some vanilla pieces and aroma whatever the aroma is and yeah it's um, it smells of lemon and vanilla and it reminds me of the smell and taste of um, do you know Amaretti, these soft, soft almond cookies from Italy. And you get them with um, lemon or limoncetto uh, flavor. And this reminds me of that. The scent of it, but also 
if you drink it, it also tastes like that. So it's it's really, it doesn't need any sweetening. It's really lovely to drink and I will certainly go back there and buy a bigger portion of this. So this is, I would think, a little bit more healthy than the black tea, but um, yes, I'm sorted. I'm more a tea drinker than a coffee drinker. And while I was in the shop, I also saw some, oh, what's it called? Servietten? <laughs> you can learn the German words at the same time while I'm rummaging around my head to think of the English word, which is like, um, not, it's not a tablecloth, that's the big one. It's not a tissue, that's when you have a cold. It's, um, well, I don't want to bore you with my word <laughs> word problems. So it's basically this one here and it has a little bunny or yeah, a little, little bunny in a red cabbage. And this will be, this will be on my table for Easter breakfast or brunch. I thought that's very cute. It's called Babs the Bunny. Or maybe it's on here. Napkins! I should have looked on the back here. It's napkins, paper napkins. So this was my haul from the shop Wintermeyer in Lennep. And then I went to a sewing and so I knew they have fabric, but I discovered that they also branched out a little and they now have wool. And now I've bought some more wool for another Frida shawl. That's the wool. Uh, Rapiers. Our tribe colorway Hark Marak and that's color 963. So Hark Marak is a crochet designer and um, I believe that Hrefjes had colorways made for uh, a couple of crochet designers, I think. Um, Sandra from Cherry Hearts also had her own colorway. Um, yeah, but uh, I didn't choose the color because of her name. I chose the color because I'm planning to make a Frida Shawl version. This color combined with a cream color. And I think this will look really great. It's a little bit changing colors, this one. So this will be my... Not my first color, but the background color. And so, yes, I bought that at the shop. My godmother was here for a visit and she went to a fabric market with my mother. And when they came back, they brought with them. Um, you see, now I'm not sure if I showed showed that already or not but if i did then just fast forward <laughs> so i got given these lovely shades of concept silky lace by katya and this is an 80 percent virgin wool 20 percent silk three different colorways these were given to me by my godmother lottie and then I also got given this colorway, which is Pearl Grau, uh, a light gray color 173 by my mother. And she um, bought me one ball of yarn. And you can see that it's not plied. It's um, still, it's super wash. So um, I think it will be okay to wash it. And I started, I wanted to uh, 
this is actually the original ball of yarn. So I wanted to write a new crochet pattern for the Murid magazine submission for issue 4. But um, so far no luck. It just kind of... I don't know, I can't... I can't think of something. <laughs> It's, it's uh, like writer's block. It's like pattern designer block or something. So I had also a look at another stitch called the bead stitch. I posted a little bit about that on Instagram. It's basically a puff stitch, but worked sideways into the double crochet US terms, which you made before. Um, it looks quite interesting. And it makes a nice texture, but it is an absolute wool eater. And um, I wanted to keep this as light as possible because issue four is again a spring and summer edition of Murid magazine. And I can tell you that I'm not going to use the one which I'm showing you here. Um, because otherwise I wouldn't show you uh, if you submit a design to moor it. Uh, one of the conditions is that it doesn't exist before and no one knows what it is. So um, I think this will be just a little project for myself. And um, this is this is uh, the beginning of the poncho. It's very light and very soft. And I love the wool, how it works up. I'm using a four millimeter hook for this one. And uh, yeah, this version definitely won't be in Murid magazine for issue four. <laughs> but I would still like to know if you, if you like the wool, if you like the texture, and if you like ponchos. Is it actually something you would want to wear? in spring just like a short poncho which goes up maybe to your elbow so that you're not so cold on the top when you go outside and you think oh it's it says spring in the calendar but it's still a bit chilly <laughs> so what do you think please let me know and this is a this is by no means a kind of thought through pattern um, the rows are all different, different versions of a fan, and um, I think if I would make a garment like this, then it would have to be a simple pattern repeat, otherwise I would drive you nuts. And uh, yeah, I have, I still have something similar in, in the back of my mind, with some optional features at the neck. And um, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I had one ball of this, so um, I bought five more so that I have six balls of this yarn in total. And it's super squishy and lovely. And uh, this is going to be a garment for myself. Um, I will keep making notes and... Yeah, do tell me if you would be interested in, in a pattern for this, regardless of Murid or not. And uh, yeah, I might eventually write it all together and uh, send it out to testers or to anyone who would like a version of this. <laughs> uh, I also, you know, I believe that you have to know what you're doing when it comes to sizing of garments. And um, even though this, this would fit me, it doesn't mean that it would fit anyone else, even if I would um, rewrite the pattern for different sizes. I, I can try my best, but I, I would have a better feeling if there would be people who would test the pattern first. Mm. Yeah. You know that um, I read, I read 
I think it was on Instagram, I don't know, in stories or somewhere, about feeling like, uh, feeling like, uh, not a fraud, like an imposter, imposter syndrome. And that's, I think, because we're all too modest at times. So uh, what I read was, uh, if you if you suffer under imposter syndrome, just do it anyway. <laughs> People can find you out and throw you out then later, but at least you've tried and had some fun. <laughs> just do it anyway. <laughs> and I will, but not with the, this exact design. Work in progress is finished, although I do come back to another work in progress, which I started today, but that's basically the same like my finished objects. Let me just show you my finished object and it's, it's knitted. Um, this is the Musselberg head. And I bought the pattern from Isolde Teague, who is at Isolde on Instagram. And I talked about this in my last episode, I believe, but now it's finished. I finished this today and I've blocked it already. We have lovely sunny weather outside and I was, I soaked it for 20 minutes when I just, I mean, I, I, I didn't ring it, never ring your, your knits. <laughs> um, I just rolled it up in a, in a, a towel and then I squeezed the water out by rolling up the towel and then stepping on the towel on the floor and then I could take it out and just lay it flat on on another fresh towel in the sun and it took less than half an hour before it was dry again. So this is the one side of the Musselberg head and the way it works is that uh, it's double-sided you make a long tube with closed ends and this is the one half you fold it and the other half is looking like this and I can't decide which is my favorite side. I think it depends on my day and my mood and uh, what else I'm wearing. <laughs> Let me just show you how how it looks like. So this is the brighter side with a blue top and it's perfect fit for my gauge. I love it. I thought I initially thought it's it's too uh, wide, but it's perfect. For my for my gauge, I followed the pattern. I've had 30 stitches, then I made the required extra knit in the round rows until I added one more increase row, then I had 32 stitches and on, well, not 32, I had four times 32. And then I just knit, 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 knit for until it was 45 centimeters long. And then I started decreasing. So this is my recipe and um, I'm going to make my next one the same way. So this is the first one. And let me show you how the other side looks like. Obviously the same fit, but uh, if I feel like more color, then this is the other one. And I've learned something new. Make left and make right, like increases. I think I like this, this color the best. I love it. So what the, what the whole project looks like is actually like this. <laughs> it's a bit blob from, I don't know, it's like a sea gherkin, <laughs> like, like uh, <laughs> an alien life form. <laughs> so the way I fold it is, I, it happens that uh, the change of this color here in the middle is about, about kind of the middle. So I just fold it here and I start making like a fold. Then I put my hand in there and I can, <laughs> yeah, kind of. Then I turn it around 
and so it all comes together. I love this hat. I absolutely love it. It fits me so well. And um, normally I have a problem with, uh, um, I have a very big head, as I said before, and um, the other hats, the commercial ones, are always like cutting me here in the neck and then my blood pressure rises <laughs> because it's kind of <laughs> cut there and and not with this one in fact i think i will just keep it on for the rest of this episode because i love it so much so now brown cow <laughs> I was very tempted to start right away my next Musselberg head. And so I did. I started using this color. Hold your horses, you might say. So this one, then my next color is this one. And then I have these ones lined up. So this is my next choice of color. And right at the end, I will add a little bit of this. I uh, actually, I knit, I started with this one and I only knit half of it. And so I have the other half left for the other end, like a little orange tip. And this is how far I've come because now I am in a rhythm. <laughs> and I've already changed to the next color here. Yeah, and uh, these are my three millimeter needles. Still haven't checked if it's 2.5 or 3, but I am absolutely certain that these are 3 millimeter needles, circular needles. And I've started again with Judy's Magic Cast On with uh, four, four stitches on each needle. And then I started increasing according to the pattern. And the left leaning and right leaning stitches mean that you have a kind of a cross here at the top and no i'm not converting completely to knitting i still prefer crochet but you know you have to keep your eyes open for other ideas and ways and crafts and yeah i'm not a one trick pony <laughs> you might have spotted this already this is the plan for my third musselberg hat oh it's not musselberg this is the plan for my third muscle burrow head. <laughs> yes, muscle burrow, like Edinburgh. <laughs> yeah, now that's all from me for today. I think it's a rather short episode, but never mind that. I just was so keen to show you my muscle burrow head. And um, I will continue knitting in my home office. From next week onwards, I won't have home office anymore. I will be in my usual office, so less time for knitting and crochet, but I hope that I will still be able to be crafty. And um, yeah, once it's four o'clock, I will start into my weekend with a little walk outside. We had some rain yesterday and today, the weather changed again to sunny blue sky and um, I, I do have a bit of Sahara sand on my balcony. Um, yes, every once in a while, usually in springtime, um, the sand from the Sahara Desert in North Africa comes over all across over to Europe, to Germany and lands on my balcony furniture. <laughs> Well, everywhere here. It was actually rather, it, it looked like a, an angry sky, um, quite dark yellowish, almost close to a, to a um, thunderstorm. But when, yeah, it was the sand in, in the air and it's, it's very fine. It's more like dust, red dust. And when it started raining, it looked like rusty puddles. And I, I wasn't like really <laughs> remembering that it's the sand. I thought like, oh, something is rusty. Something is making rusty puddles. I have to clean this up 
before it, it stains my my furniture but it's just like I mean you can brush it off once it's dry and um, yeah so I had a bit of Africa here but enough waffling and, and jabbering on I will knit a little bit more and then it's outside and I hope that you will be able to enjoy your weekend enjoy your crafting have a lovely time and I will talk to you soon Make a muscle burrow head.